Hello and welcome to 90 East. In this video we'll be looking at atomic number, electron number, mass number and isotopes. So settle in and enjoy the ride. Now probably the most important concept that we're going to talk about in this video is this very first one here. That atoms of the same element will have the same number of protons. And we call that number the atomic number. So we can look at the atomic number of different elements, for instance carbon, or hydrogen and find out what the atomic number is and then we'll know what number of protons there are in that atom. Importantly all carbon atoms will have the same atomic number, all hydrogen atoms will have the same atomic number. So if you don't remember anything else from this video, remember that atomic number. Okay moving on, so, so atoms will also have the same number of electrons as protons, so if we look at the atomic number we'll be able to work out how many electrons there are in an atom as well. If you remember from our last video, protons are positively charged subatomic particles and electrons are negatively charged subatomic particles. If you've got the exact same number of opposite charges, then you're going to have a neutral charge and that's always the case with atoms. They have no overall charge, they are neutral. Now another important point to remember is that even though atoms will always have the same atomic number and therefore always the same number of protons, they can have different numbers of neutrons. To be able to work out how many neutrons an atom has we need to look at its mass number. And the mass number is the number of protons plus neutrons. So in reality it's the number of different subatomic particles in the nucleus itself. Now it's really important that we don't confuse mass number with mass of an atom. Mass number is just the number of subatomic particles that contribute towards the mass of an atom. But what about electrons I hear you ask? Well that's a good question. Having a look at this table over here we can see the first section is something we've already talked about. So the charges of different subatomic particles with protons being plus one, neutrons being a zero or neutral and electrons being minus one. But each of these subatomic particles also have got a relative mass. So a proton's relative mass is 1 and neutron is 1 as well. But the electron is less than 1 1,000th 1, of a proton neutron. That is, it contributes very, very little mass to the actual atom. So when we're trying to calculate the mass of an atom, we don't bother with electrons. We just look at protons and neutrons. And that's why the mass number only looks at protons and neutrons. So if you know what the mass number is and you know what the atomic number is which is the number of protons, you can work out what the number of neutrons is. But where do we get that information from? How do we work out what the atomic number and the mass number of an element is? Now you've probably seen this table before, it's the periodic table and this is only an abbreviated version. If you're doing GCSC chemistry you only really need to know about the first 20 odd chemicals here. But I've put a few more extra for completion's sake in that row. Now in order to understand the periodic table we need to know what these different boxes mean. So in the middle there the larger uh, letters here are the elemental symbol of each element. So for instance we've got carbon, boron, hydrogen, beryllium, helium. If you're not really sure, if you're not very familiar with these different chemical symbols, I encourage you to have a look at periodic table in your normal chemistry textbooks or I'll try and link a table to this video for you to have a look at as well. Now the periodic table is sorted by atomic number and so that's the number at the very top there and we remember that's the number of protons in any atom of that element. So one for hydrogen, two for helium, three for lithium, four for beryllium and it keeps going on just adding one each time for each different element. And at the bottom of each square here you can see the mass number. So the mass number for hydrogen is 1, for helium is 4, for lithium is 7, beryllium is 9, etc. And remember the mass number is the number of protons plus neutrons. So let's take an example. Let's look at carbon for example. But we'll magnify this a little. So here is our carbon element. And the atomic number is 6, so we know there's 6 protons. That means it also has 6 electrons. And the mass number is 12. So how do we work out what the neutron number is? Well, just with some simple algebra, you'll have it in a jiffy. 
So we know that the mass number is 12, and we know that that's the number of protons plus the number of neutrons, which here is depicted as an x. If you move the 6 to the other side of the equation, so 12 minus 6, you'll have the neutron number, which in this case is 6 neutrons. That was a pretty simple example, and that's pretty much what you need to know for GSCSE. Now let's have a look at another couple of examples. Let's look at lithium. So lithium, we know, has got three protons because the atomic number is three, which means it must have three electrons. To work out the neutron number, we look at the mass number here, and we've got three protons plus x neutrons equals seven. Therefore, the neutron number must be seven minus three, which equals two, four. Again, another really simple example. So let's look at one more example, aluminium. So aluminium, the atomic number is 13, which means it's 13 protons, 13 electrons. To work out the neutrons, we look at the mass number, which is 27. So we know that 13 protons plus x neutrons equals 27. Therefore, x must equal to 27 minus 13, which equals to 14 neutrons. Now we're just going to look at one last example here. And this may make things a little bit trickier, so please feel free to watch this video a couple of times over to make sure you've got it clear in your head. And we will be talking about these types of examples a little bit more in another video. So we'll get rid of the lithium, move this aluminium over to the left-hand side. And now we're going to look at another aluminium atom. So the mass numbers that I've given here in the periodic table are the mass numbers of those most commonly found atoms for these elements. And that's why aluminium here has a mass number of 27. But you can find in probably every 1 million aluminium atoms, one or two atoms that actually have a mass number of 26. So let's look at what the neutron number for this atom is. We know that it must have 13 protons because it's got the exact same atomic number and that's what makes it aluminium. It must have therefore 13 electrons we know that 13 protons plus x neutrons equals 26, the mass number. Therefore, the neutron number must be 26 minus 13, and that's 13 neutrons. We call these two different aluminium atoms isotopes. Now, it's really important to remember that isotopes always have the same atomic number. That's what makes them that element, but just a different number of neutrons. There are many different elements in the periodic table that have got isotopes. Pretty much every single one of them has, and we'll look at those in more detail in a future video. For now, you just need to remember that the proton number or the atomic number defines an atom. So if you had an aluminium atom and you added an extra proton, that would change the atomic number to 14, and that atom would become silicon. If you took another aluminium atom and removed a proton, you would have an atomic number of 12 and that atom would become magnesium. So what defines that aluminium atom as being aluminium is the proton number. So more on isotopes later on, but just for now remember, the atomic number or the proton number defines an atom. Atoms are neutral, so they have the same number of protons and electrons. And the mass number of an atom is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. The neutron number can vary from one atom to another of an element without actually changing the atom type. And last but not least, you just need to remember that atoms that have different numbers of neutrons or different mass numbers, but the same atomic number are called isotopes. Hope you found this video useful. If you have, please share it with your friends and let us know as well. If you've got any questions, just send us a message directly through YouTube or email us at 90easttv at gmail.com. Thanks very much.